Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in this video we're going to be having a look at 850 HPA temperature charts. Now these charts are a staple of most weather forecasts as they do show us what sort of air masses we do have within the atmosphere. Now 850 HPA is a level in the atmosphere where we see no diurnal range. That is very very important. Now if you don't know what the diurnal range is, it is the temperatures um, changing between night and day. So at the surface, normally, temperatures are warmer in the day and cooler at night because we have solar radiation increasing the temperatures at the surface. Now, 850 HPA temperature is about 1.5 kilometers above, the, uh, above sea level and it is a level where there is no diurnal range. So these temperatures you see up in the atmosphere are not going to change too much depending on night and day. So it's very important for seeing the air masses, not only giving us surface conditions, but also giving us, as I said, air mass changes, which allow us to look at precipitation as well. Now, in this video, we're going to be having a range of different scenarios and showing how we can use them, as I said, to forecast precipitation and forecast uh, temperatures at the surface. Now, on an 850 HPA temperature, we have two different things really. We've got our isobars, so our pressure levels, and we also have the colours, which is representative of temperature. Now, the pressure on here is not so accurate. It is just generally showing the isobars, the positioning of the high pressure and low pressure. And again, as I've said in the pressure explainer, they are used to show wind directions and wind speeds as well. So the tighter the isobars, the stronger the wind speeds, and around low pressure, the wind comes in from an anti-clockwise anti direction, and high pressure comes in from a clockwise direction. So we have the air masses here, we have the isobars showing the direction those air masses are moving. Now here we have a chart from the 30th of April 2019. Now I picked this date as it has a very, it shows very good correlation between the 850 HPA temperature and the surface conditions. And at the end of the video, I'll explain how or what we can tell from this chart. Um, and yeah, what we can tell from this chart in terms of the surface conditions. And then I'll tell you the exact actual surface high um, and, and we'll see how closely we uh, how closely it does correlate. Now, as I said, these 850 HPA temperatures are high up in the atmosphere. They're not the surface conditions. So we do have to sort of change them. So zero degrees at 850 HPA does not mean zero degrees at the surface. So there is a bit of fluctuations, as I said, and it does depend on the time of year. That is very important. There's no sort of staple figure. So 850 HPA plus 10 degrees. There's no staple figure um, in regards to surface conditions. It does fluctuate, but there are general figures we can say throughout the year that give us indications of the air masses. So if you start with a one very extreme scenario, many of you may know this, this is from the Beast from the East back in early 2018, so late February, early March, when you saw an incredibly cold air mass come in from Siberia. Now you can see here these blues, these dark blues and a little bit of purples coming in as well, and these 850 HPA temperatures are around minus 10 to minus 15 for the UK, and I think we touched around minus 18 degrees. Now, in the depths of winter, we generally can add around 7 to 8 degrees to our 850 HPA temperatures. So we have a minus 5 at 850 HPA in around December, January time. I'd say surface conditions in the day, maybe 3 to 5 degrees overnight, falling towards freezing, uh, maybe much below freezing. Now, remember, 850 HPA temperatures... Um, we can only really say exactly the surface conditions in the day when we got constant sunshine because at night it all does depend on cloud amounts um, and sort of things like snow and all this sort of stuff can really affect it as well. Um, but at night, generally in the winter, the, the 850 HPA temperatures can come down to the surface or even colder. But in the day, it's around 7 to 8 degrees we can add in the depths of winter. That is December and January. Solar radiation is very low. Now, when we get to February, March time, solar radiation is actually increasing quite rapidly. We're actually quite, uh, we've got quite high solar radiation considering the cold air we do have around. So for the beast in the east, it was generally around 10 degrees we can add in around February, March time. So you can see here, we've got a minus 10 isotherm through, minus 15 coming through, and that is representative of what we saw at the surface. On this day, which is Wednesday, uh, the 1st of March, we did see 
surface conditions uh, getting to around freezing, if not just slightly below freezing. And you can see that representative from the minus 10 to close to minus 15 isotherm moving in. So high temperatures around that mi uh, minus 5 to 0 degree mark. Overnight temperatures dropping down to the 850 HPA temperature, around minus 10 to minus 15, if not a little bit lower in a few spots. Now, as I said, we can also look at the wind direction. So if I do put on some arrows, you can see the wind direction coming in from the east. So you can see where that air mass is coming in. Now, I did say the 850 HPA temperature is diurnal, so it's not getting affected by sun uh, and night, uh, sorry, day and night, but it does get affected by other things. It will get affected by day and night slightly, um, but nowhere near as much as the surface condition. It doesn't fluctuate anywhere near that much. So this air mass will be warming up um, as it is generally spreading over warmer land masses, things like that. So it does change. We can see alterations of the 850 HPA temperatures. When can we see them relatively quickly? But it, it gives us a representation of the air mass. And you can see how the air mass is changing. And you can see to our south how we've got much warmer air masses. Uh, and that will be representative of a big weather front. And, of course, later that week, we saw Storm Emma. So if you just looked at this chart, and you see that low pressure running up from the southwest into the cold air. Even before knowing that this low pressure was going to bring Storm Emma, we can deduce that we're going to be seeing some heavy snowfall along that boundary, highly, highly likely. So again, it shows us how we can have a look at precipitation as well. Again, it's not going to show us intensities, it's not going to show us exact positions, but we can roughly say along that boundary heading northwards, there's going to be snow, quite heavy snow with a 10 to 20 degree uh, temperature sort of gradient there. Now, if we do have a look at another scenario, this is completely opposite. This is from July 2019, end of July, where we saw the temperature, all-time temperature record in the UK, 38.9 degrees in Cambridge. Now, you can see here we've got an incredibly hot air mass. We've got the 15 to 20 degree isotherm moving in. Now, as I said, in the depths of winter, we can add about 7 to 8 degrees to our 850 HPA temperatures. But in the depths of summer, so June, July time, we can add as much as 15 degrees, maybe even more than that, to our 850 HPA temperatures. So you see the 20 degree isofer moving in, so temperatures are going to get to around 35 degrees, and that's pretty much what we saw quite widely, uh, and again, peaking 38.9 degrees. Again, it is a rough ballpark estimate uh, with a couple degrees sort of deviation from it. So we can't say the exact surface conditions because, of course, there are other factors in play, but the 800 HPA temperature is very good at showing us our general air mass and a, an estimation of that surface condition. So we, we can say 35 degrees is highly likely here, and that's what we saw, widely 35 degrees, peaking around 38, 39 degrees in a few spots. Um, so yeah, as I said, June, July, 15 degrees we can add to it, and overnight temperatures, you can basically say the 850 HPA temperature um, which was 15 to 20 degrees, and that's sort of the overnight lows we did see quite widely. So with regards to 850 HPA temperatures, generally overnight temperatures are what we're seeing at 850 HPA, and in the day temperatures, in the depths of winter, we can add about 7 or 8 degrees. In summer, we can add about 15 degrees. And again, that varies through the year. So springtime, maybe 10 to 12 degrees you can add to it. Autumn time, 10 to, 10 to 12 degrees, and reducing and as I said, there is fluctuations, different things can come into account, cloud amounts, inversions we can get as well. Uh, I'll make another explainer on that because that sort of throws us all out the window. But we generally only normally see those in winter where we have warmer upper air temperatures than we do at the surface in the day. But that is a very specific sort of scenario and that is because of very low solar radiation and sort of getting cold air trapped towards the surface. Now, we can also see similar sort of scenarios in the summer where we only have moderate upper air temperatures, but because of the intense solar radiation towards the surface, we can see that uh, 850 HPA temperature to surface ratio get well above that 15 degree mark, maybe towards the 20 degree mark in specific scenarios. But the majority of the time, those sort of thresholds are set in the winter, 7 to 8 degrees in the summer, up to 15 degrees. That's what we can add. And it's also with this, of course, we had the arrows, so you can see a southerly wind coming in. So you can see the air mass direction, and that also is useful because if we know where the air mass is coming from, it can also help us deduce other things like dew points, stuff like that. Um, 
because if these arrows were coming in off the Atlantic, you'd expect to be more warm and moist. If it's coming in from the near continent, you expect those dew points to be lower. And that's very similar as well in the wintry scenario we saw from the BC East. If we saw this sort of air masses coming in from the north or the west, it's more likely to have higher dew points. Whereas it's coming from the east, a drier air mass, we can see lower dew points. And that can help us forecast other things. Uh, and especially when we have got marginal snow scenarios, we can have similar 850 HPA temperatures coming in from the east and the west, the easterly winds would produce snow, the westerly winds wouldn't produce snow. So these isobar directions, the wind directions are very useful in recording sort of types of precipitation, precipitation amounts, cloud amounts, things like that. But we're not going to be focusing on that, on that in this video. We'll have a look at that uh, when we have a look at uh, potential uh, and sort of scenarios for snow. But we'll have a look at that later in the year as we get towards that. So if we do finish the video by just having a look at that final chart that I just show you at the start of the video from late April 2019. So you can see here the upper air temperatures are around 5 to 7 degrees at 850 HPA. 10 degrees is just to our south. Now, if I, by looking at this, you think in April time, perhaps we can add maybe 10 degrees, 12 degrees to our 850 HPA temperatures. So if you think widely, we had around 5, maybe slightly higher in terms of 850 HPA temperatures. Um, we would expect, what, maybe 17, 18 degrees? And that's what we saw. We saw 18 degrees in London. So as you can see here, it's a perfect scenario where you just roughly estimate maybe 10 to 12 degrees add on to those 850 HPA temperatures. We can forecast what roughly we'd see on the surface. Again, it's not completely accurate. As I said, there's other things going into, into this, but roughly 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 12 degrees above. So 18, 19 degrees is highly likely. One caveat I must put with 850 HPA temperatures just at the end of this video is this, uh, what I've said here, really only applies to UK and Europe because there are areas around the world uh, and well, in some areas in the UK, I must stress, with elevation where this does not apply. Because if you think 850 HPA temperatures are 1.5 kilometers above the surface and we see mountains getting to that level in the atmosphere. Uh, get into that level throughout the world, really. So one example that I've looked at before, quite a big city in America, Denver in Colorado. It is very high uh, with altitude, uh, very, very high. And what we see there is the 800 feet temperature is actually the surface temperature because of the height within the atmosphere. So we do see a diurnal range with the 850 HPA temperature there. So I must stress, this does really only apply to areas that are close to sea level, maybe 100, 200 meters elevation. Uh, much higher than that, then we'll start to see other deviations come in. Those 850 HPA temperatures much being much closer to the surface conditions um, as the as the surface rises in the, in, in, in the in altitude, really. So I must put that caveat in there. This, again, only applies generally to sea level areas and areas with moderate to low elevation. Higher elevation, it becomes much more complicated. And that's why we get those sort of old sayings where it can be sunny at the bottom of the mountain and horrible at the top of the mountain because we can see massive, massive swings, not only because of these temperature changes, but also because of cloud amounts, different, like, different things, orographic rainfall, things like that that can give massive, massive changes. Um, so yes, this is all for sea level to moderate elevation, which in the UK, most people live at that sort of level. So hopefully this video has explained why we do look at 850 HPA temperature charts. We don't look just at two meters temperature charts, just look at surface conditions, because it not only gives us the indication of the upper air temperatures, which can, we can correlate to the uh, surface conditions, but it also gives us pressure levels, so we can see where low pressure and high pressure is, we can see the, where the wind direction is, and of course we can see the boundaries between air masses, which gives us good indications where we could see precipitation and thicker cloud. As if there's not particularly, uh, if there's not particularly high temperature gradient, it's unlikely that we're going to be seeing any massive weather fronts. If we're seeing an incredibly hot air mass with low pressure mixed in, which we can see on these charts, like in the chart into July 2019, with that low pressure running in off the Atlantic, we could see big thunderstorms. So again, it's not natural. We can't say exactly what's going to happen from this, but we can get a very good idea from just looking at one simple 850 HPA temperature snapshot. So hopefully, as I said, this has helped you understand these charts a little bit better and why we use them in the videos. Uh, and yeah, we don't see it generally on sort of TV forecasts, but these are the charts that the, uh, the, the presenters do look at uh, and put into their forecasts as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this. I've learned a little bit more about these sort of charts and I'll see you again for another video soon.